Hey guys, uh, now it seems like not too long ago I came to you with the Prophet version 2 and now I'm already here with Prophet version 3. But I must say that although it's not that long time between the version 2 and version 3, this is a deserved upgrade, it is a deserved new name, new generation uh, of uh, Prophet uh, because it does have some really, really nice add-ons that you will also, I think, like. So let's get started with the video. Uh, you already know the RTI brand. I review practically all of their guns till now. And uh, this is the third generation as of the uh, Prophet. This is the performance version with all the bells and whistles. And uh, we will get mainly into changes in these uh, changes from uh, version two in this video, and there's actually quite a bit of them. And actually, there's also some. Uh, let's say in terms, you can also see those changes from without even discussing them if you know the uh, the version two already. So um, I have the gun here equipped with everything so the suppressor of course and the scope is extra and also the bipod this is not part of the gun but i have it so you can kind of get a feeling of uh, how the gun looks first what you can see if you know the version 2 is the completely new and redesigned buttstock and also cheek piece and this is a very very nice upgrade uh, first of all this is completely ambidextrous so meaning that you can actually replace this uh, chick piece and put it on the other side and uh, you don't need a new chick piece this uh, one actually fits on the other side all you need to do is of course remove this screw from this plate and then unscrew these two screws and put everything on the other side really easy to do uh, next thing is the new butt pad this is removable and finally, finally, this is something I was complaining about for a, from the beginning. Finally, we get a rubberized butt plate, which is, in my opinion, really important because the aluminum plate directly on the shoulder is just not comfortable to shoot. And this one is much be better, of course, it's curved and uh, the, the softness is completely different and you don't then get that cold feeling cold uh, plate aluminium on your shoulder and um, this one is also fully adjustable so you adjust this adjust it by uh, unscrewing basically not unscrewing just loosening this um, four screws and you can then slide it up or down as you wish um, we will do this later i will just show you this i will just get through all the uh, upgrades and then we will go to the actual uh, adjustments the next next one and also i think really important that now we have a sort of a power wheel, wheel basically adjuster for the hammer spring uh, and this is really cool because now we can just adjust it and there are clicks so you can remember in which position you've been and repeat go back to the position you were before if you change the settings uh, of course this is still a pressure assisted gun so the effect that the hammer spring uh, has is not the same as the conventional guns this is actually something that was already explained in one of my previous videos and um, okay if we go uh, um, to the next uh, improvement is actually this high pressure connecting hose which is now slightly thicker and also you have here option to use a key to loosen it if you're taking the gun apart this is really important and uh, there is also two really really significant upgrades in uh, that has to do with this hose one of them is the really really annoying squeak you had uh, after the shot because of the one way valve valve that was actually that is actually in here so start of this hose this is now completely gone actually so this is really 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 nice thing because everyone always asks me what is that so i will just demonstrate and fire a dry shot nothing only a pop so as it has to be so <laughs> that is really not uh, uh, let's say not a functional um, upgrade uh, it has doesn't have to do anything with performance but it was really no annoying before and the second one that has to do also with it this connecting hose is in the back side uh, this new version now gets rid of the 
couple of issues that were uh, sometimes with leaking with this pressure assisted valve on the first batch of the um, Prophet 2. So this one doesn't have those issues anymore. Uh, the next thing is, and this is something I'll also show you better a little uh, bit afterwards. You now have three screws here for the barrel. Now this is not important that the barrel is hold more tightly, but the main thing is that now the, uh, the screws are also forward, which means that it pushes down the barrel on the correct place because previously there was only this first screw which is right in here on the back side and this one is actually this hole has to be done because this is where the transfer port is drilled as well so now this last one is let's say cosmetic only so there is only a screw with uh, o-ring inside so that the air doesn't blow uh, up from this part but it doesn't hold the barrel in place but the front two are the actually the ones that uh, hold the a barrel in place uh, and once you replace the barrel of course you have to loosen only the front two take the barrel out put the new one in and uh, tighten those two again uh, there is also a slight design change uh, uh, all the shapes are more round now so it's much nicer to hold of course if we include the cheek piece and the butt plate it's really really nice uh, to hold now uh, the next thing is the cocking mechanism. It's all, almost the same uh, in terms of operation. The main difference is that before, when you were cocking it, you basically were pushing with uh, the um, uh, lever, you were pushing the pellet pusher back and the pellet pusher actually pull the hammer also back. So this uh, created kind of a torsion uh, force on the back part because the pellet pusher is high up and this rod that pushing is pushing it back is lower. This is now changed. So basically there are independent connections to the pellet pusher. So you're still pushing the pellet pusher back, but of course there is no force on that one. But there is a separate pin that actually pushes the hammer back. Uh, which is almost aligned with this uh, this uh, connection connecting rod so there is no torsion force anymore so it's slightly easier to cock and also it will not wear out as fast so that is really really nice to have okay we are kind of moving from back towards the front the next really important also thing in my my uh, in my shooting is the fact that now we have the rail which is adjustable it actually goes from 20 to 150 moa so there is no more excuse not to shoot really really long range with this gun uh, it's really easy to adjust and there they also give you, you you can basically manually adjust it but you also kind of get a fine adjustment option i will just remove the scope i have it very slightly screwed on for the purpose of the video right now so basically these two screws this one and this one are the ones that are holding the whole thing in place so if you loosen this one and have this one slightly tightened you can actually already move it so tilt it or back so you can have it almost straight or tilt it quite a bit uh, but there is also a way that uh, you uh, slightly um, tighten both of those and use this small screw here for very fine adjustment so you can really fine uh, uh, tune it, not tune it, uh, adjust it really accurately. And then once you are done, of course, you have to tighten this two really well in order not uh, for the rail not to move. Uh, so this is really, really cool in my opinion. It, uh, I love the fact that you can adjust this because most of scopes, if you're shooting long range with air guns, you don't have enough elevation on the scope itself. You need something like this as well. And there are some aftermarket mounts and things like that to do this. But of course, if you have it on a gun, it's always easier and much better. Um, the regulator is also redesigned. I must say that I'm really happy with the operation of this one. But the big advantage is that now you have a release valve also here. So you still have it on the back. So you can still bleed the whole plenum and the whole gun uh, through the back as you did before. But now you have an option to bleed out just the air between the regulator 
and the plenum. So you can leave the air, so you basically you can now leave the air in the bottle as well as in the plenum. All you have to do is release, so uh, unscrew this uh, regulator adjuster fully, meaning that it's regulated to zero bars, no? so it uh, basically will hold air, and then you bleed out the air between the bottle and the plenum here, and then you can unscrew the bottle and you still have it fully charged and still have the plenum uh, fully charged. So this is a really, really nice feature. Uh, next one is a slight cosmetic thing. And this is the fact that uh, before you had a slight, uh, very small rail, uh, I think it was dovetail, uh, on both sides, it kind of didn't serve any purpose. So this is now removed and there is some texture uh, here now for uh, for aesthetics, I guess. And this was this is cool to me because before it was kind of on in the way when you close it fully, you kind of when you grab the uh, lever, you kind of could grab also that uh, uh, that rail, which is basically completely unnecessary. So uh, I think this is it. And if you think about it, this is quite a lot. And now we will go through uh, all, the, all, the, all those things one by one, so I will demonstrate it. So if that is enough for you, you can stop watching here, but if you want to see details, make sure you continue to watch. So let's go from the back side again. So I remove the butt plate, and again, it's really cool to have a rubber butt plate. Now I can leave the gun anywhere. I just place it and I know that the rubber will hit the table and not uh, some hard metal. Of course, right now it is because I take the, took the rubber off. But you know what I mean. So let's take, I think it's a two millimeter Allen key. So we will loosen those four screws. Okay. Let's see if we can do it like this, yeah. Not fully un, uh, unscrew, just loosen them. So, and now I can drag it anywhere I like. I can go really high or I can go really low. So let's go to the lowest position. And now you just tighten them up. And put, put the rubber plate back on. Done. Now we have it lower. Okay. Next is the is the chick piece. So what I will demonstrate is how to put it on the other side of the gun. So this requires 1.5 millimeter Allen key. So two screws out. And by the way, this is of course adjustable up and down as you wish. And you can also tilt it if you like to any side you want. So I will just now rotate the gun so you can see. And I will unscrew this screw, which is one of the, the ones that will be afterwards used for this hole. Yeah, but this Allen key is too poor quality, so I will have to get another one. Okay, I have a better solution for this kind of screws. So, loosen this one up and put it out. Put the chick piece with... Put the chick piece with screws and washers. And put the one that you had on this side on the other side because we don't the, the hole is empty here right now okay so as you can see if i loosen this two up i can adjust this down up and tilt it any way i like any when it fits me best and also there is a cutout for the magazine which is more than su sufficient. You can put it from the top and just tilt it to the side. Of course, now that you have it on the left side, you will tilt it to the right side and vice versa. So we will leave this one 
as it is right now, just tighten it slightly. And I will also remove this plate so you can see the uh, improvements of the cocking mechanism. So basically that it cocks ha the hammer directly mm -hmm. and not the pellet pusher and then the pellet pusher the hammer. By the way, there is a small all improvement also on the pellet pusher and in which way you replace the pellet pusher itself. You need now a slightly bigger Allen key to do it, which is always nice because those small Allen keys have tendencies to strip. strip. And uh, uh, that's cool. And also you, it's in slightly different position, so you don't have to cock the gun. All you have to do is put it on this place and then you can replace the pellet pusher. So here you will be able to see it better. So as you can see, there is another pin here and this one actually engages the hammer and the top one, of course, this one that is moving because the uh, pellet pusher has to lock, of course, uh, is only pushing the pellet pusher, which is under no force, of course. So there is no more uh, torque on, the, on this square part back here, so this one. This is really cool. I would leave it just like this and let's move on. So the next one is, the next one I will not demonstrate because I have it really set up the way I want, but of course you would use here Allen key uh, 2.5, loosen this one and this one, and then use this one for fine adjustment. Up and down, so of course if you thread it in it will be more uh, tilted down or vice versa. Of course, if you go back, you have to fully untighten it and hold it down once uh, while you are unscrewing the screw. You can only adjust it this way with this fine adjustment with slightly tighten these two screws. And the last one and also really cool to me is the one with the regulator. So as you can see, I have the gun now set to roughly 150 bars, okay? So what I do is go fully down with the regulated pressure. Of course, the pressure will not go down when, uh, while I do this because I'm not going to dry fire it. So I will only unscrew it fully. So this is okay. It's not recommended to do too oftenly, but it is okay. So now it's completely free. You can see it. I can uh, rotate it totally easy. And now I take the, so the, the adjuster is uh, Allen key uh, six millimeter. And now I take the three millimeter key and I can bleed off the air here. So that's it, that's it. And now I can remove the full, uh, the whole bottle. Okay. And uh, just to show you, there is still air in the plenum. Okay. And also, there is still air in the cylinder or the, the bottle. Of course, uh, now I will have to reset the regulator pressure. So I will now put the bottle back in. And what I do is put it in on the desired position. So this would be fully threaded in, but this is unpractical because now I have the uh, fill uh, gauge here, my fill uh, nipple here, and the gauge is here, which is unpractical. So I, I move it just enough back so it's in my optimal position. So this is kind of my optimal position. Of course, it's not tight right now, but this will be tightened once the air uh, of the regulator is pressurized once this is pressurized. So first I have to make sure that I, uh, I uh, this bleed valve is tightened so it doesn't uh, leak out air anymore. And now I adjust the regulator and I will do this, hopefully I will be able to do this and show it to you, how easy it is to adjust this on this new regulator. So pay attention to the gauge, hopefully you, it's focused now. So I'm not engaging yet, so now I am. I'm not uh, seeing because it's really quiet. So now it's about 80 bar. 
and now it's about 120 bar and now it's about 140. Let's say that that's okay with me and let's do a couple of shots. 140 still. So really easy, no, uh, no need to take dry shots. I mean, it's, it's still recommended to do some dry shots once you adjust the regulator, just to make sure it will stay on that place. But it's really cool that it's just so easy. Before, of course, it was not so easy. So in my mind, the P3 version is more than worthy uh, a successor to the P2. Uh, I think that what the upgrades that are done here are probably one of the most significant they ever did, at least from the user standpoint. Of course, the valve on the P2 was a really big thing, but that was not, uh, the user didn't have that much uh, a direct uh, feeling of what it's different in there. But if you think about it, the rubberized, finely rubberized butt plate, the cheek piece, the adjustable uh, rail, uh, the regulator which you can bleed, the finally, finally <laughs> resolved issue with the squeaking noise of the uh, one-way valve. The leaking issue, which personally I didn't have on uh, version 2, but a lot of you did. Uh, and uh, just an overall design, which is really, really slick, I think. And also, now you kind of get directly this... Um, place if you if, if you put this fully uh, up you have this perfect uh, place to put the, uh, the sandbag which is in my experience one of the most accurate accurate way of shooting with uh, bench rest uh, uh, competitions and anything like that so thank you guys guys for watching make sure you subscribe and hit that bell bu um, uh, button to be notified or notified of uh, any of my new videos so thank you guys uh, i will be shooting uh, with this gun really shortly i actually already have one video prepared with zan projectiles these are the new pellets the br100 i tested on those out with this gun actually i had it in the compact version but it performed really well i had it really highly tuned up in order to propel these heavy pellets but nevertheless it performed excellent uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks guys.